Good evening folks and welcome back. Cumberland Outdoorsman with you here again on a cold mid-January night here in Tennessee. I'm back here in my den and I've got a little project going on and what I've got in front of me here is a little rifle that I've owned for many years and I wanted to showcase this one real quick because it directly relates to the project at hand. This is a little Remington Model 700 ADL in short action. This is in 243. It's a shorter action, as I mentioned. And, uh, oh, I've owned it for probably 30 years or so. This is the ADL. It does not have the swing down floor plate as is featured in the BDL or CDL or other models, but it is still the same action, same bolt, same trigger mechanism. Everything is the same, you know. Uh, this one here has an American walnut stock, American black walnut, and it still has the factory finish on it. Um, I've taken several deer with this gun quite successfully. The Remington Model 700 came out in 1962, I believe, and is still in production now. I think there have been something like 8 million of these things made in so many different variations and uh, so many different calibers, probably up to like 40 calibers, you know. So you can get them in 458 Winchester Magnum all the way down to the 17 Remington. Um, so they're, they're quite versatile. and. They have an extremely strong locking system, two very massive locking lugs, as you can see on the front of the bolt. Um, they're famous three rings of steel that Remington advertises, where the head of the cartridge is actually encased by the bolt itself. You have that first ring, then you have, of course, the barrel, the chamber, and then the receiver. So, you, you know, you have a, a very dependable, very strong locking mechanism there. Um, but enough about that. Um, I didn't, I'm not making this video to actually review the gun itself, the Model 700, because there's lots of reviews out there. Later on, I'll be featuring this gun again in a shooting session. But the purpose of today's video is a project, as I mentioned earlier, of refinishing the stock on a Model 700. This is also an ADL version. It does not have the detachable floor plate. You know, it's, it's slick all the way across, right down to where the trigger guard is. And uh, the person that owns this wanted it refinished because it had a lot of scratches and gouges in it, you know. I mean, all over the gun. The gun had been used quite heavily. So what I did is uh, I masked off all the checkering with masking tape, followed all the lines all the way around, and made sure that was stuck down and adhered to the surface of the checkering itself very well. Then I start out with 220 grit and, and take the finish right off the gun all the way from, from the butt plate all the way to the forend tip. And one thing you know that I should mention in case you decide to do this for yourself, uh, take your time and be careful. Try not to destroy the classic lines that are in the stock. You know, you want to keep all the lines nice and sharp. While you're sanding this, you don't want to round any of the lines off. Keep those lines sharp. And in fact, you can actually accentuate and sharpen those lines a little bit better. Uh, some of the most troublesome points are around the bottom of the grip cap the cheek piece here in the flutes of the grip cap and also on the forend. You know, you, you got to keep those lines nice and crisp and sharp. Try not to round those off. Then the next step would be to go down in grit size or go up, as you would say, uh, to uh, 320 grit get all of the little tiny scratches out of it, you know, take your time, go over every little square inch of the, of the stock itself, and then finally we're going to finish it off with some 400 grit, and uh, after that's done, I start applying the true oil, 
And the way I apply it is with my finger. It's really designed to be used as a hand rub finish. And I've had really good results with that stuff in the past. I've got a lot of gun stocks myself that I've refinished. And I'll tell you, it really brings the grain of the wood out and it just adds a beautiful luster to the wood. Especially when you have fine wood like this one here. This, this is also American black walnut. So anyway, uh, enough jabbering. Let me get back and uh, get to work on this stock again. And when I get it down past 400 grit, we'll go ahead and apply the first few coats of the true oil and we'll see what kind of color will come out in this particular piece of black walnut. There's one thing I forgot to mention. Um, anytime you get ready to refinish a stock that has been checkered, you might want to invest in some checkering tools. This one here is a Dembart that I got through Brownells. They have interchangeable tips. They come with a single line, double line, triple, uh, on up I think to like four lines. And they come in different increments of line per inch. You go from 16 to 18 to 20, you know, 24 inch, whatever. The one I usually stick with is, is around 18 lines per inch. And all the cutters are different as well. You have uh, different grades of cutters. You have coarse and you have fine grade because the tip of it is like a tiny file rasp that comes down to a sharp point. And that's uh, what forms your diamonds is you have one straight line that intersects with another straight line. And in between those lines, as those edges are brought up, that's what forms the diamonds in your checkering. So if you're going to refinish the stock inadvertently, you'll probably sand down some of the checkering a little bit. So you need to be able to go back and resharpen those diamonds. And uh, just using a uh, handheld checkering tool like this will aid you greatly. And I, I would suggest you practice with it a little bit first. You know, make sure you can keep all your lines nice and straight and uh, stay within the line as you're following it. That way you're not going to mess up the checkering pattern. But I just wanted to throw that in there because that's, uh, that's very important. Checkering is, is part of the aesthetics of the stock. And you don't want to be dulling down the, uh, the checkering diamonds because that's going to take away from the quality and the looks of, of the piece of wood that you're working on. So anyway, let me go ahead and finish out. And uh, like I said, we'll be back when we get ready to reapply the, the finish on the stock itself with this true oil. So just stay tuned. Okay, now I've got all of the surface of this rifle stock sanded to a very fine satiny uh, texture. It's very smooth. I think I pretty much got all the scratches out of it. Everything looks pretty good here. Um, one thing I should mention, make sure you keep your masking tape on your checkering while you're refinishing using uh, any kind of oil finish or whatever you decide to use. That's a final step after everything is done. You want one light coat of oil on your checkering pattern just to seal it. And that's all. So let's go ahead and put the first coat of true oil on this piece of walnut. I pretty much apply it somewhat liberally on the first coat. First of all, let's get all of the edges first. Just so we don't forget them. And this is a process of uh, just applying lots of thin coats of oil to seal all the pores of the wood. Okay, we'll go with the four end tip. Make sure that's covered. Try not to put too much on there so you don't get get any runs. But you can see there the color of that wood is really coming out now.
true oil is a rather thin oil. So when you put it on, you know, you gotta spread it out pretty quickly so, so you don't get any runs. There you can see the wood grain starting to pop out. I just get a little dab on my finger and, and go over it, spread it out. You could put um, one coat of stain if you'd like, you know, just to darken it a little bit, but personally I like the color of black walnut just as it is. There's really no need to stain black walnut. I mean, it's got plenty of color all by itself. In fact, a lot of stains try to mimic the color of that wood right there. Just as it is. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. I don't see any scratches so far. I'm trying to do this over the shoulder with the camera. Pointed right at it there. Now you can see some of that fire coming out in that wood. And the good thing about true oil is you can put it on as heavily as you want. You know, some people don't want more of a finish than that, which I always put more than that on there because I really want the wood to be sealed. But I mean, it's, you know, it's your preference. We're going to give this gun a, a nice high gloss finish. That's what gives these older guns so much character. And that's what makes them so appealing to a lot of folks. I mean, there's something to be said about the uh, durability of these black polymer stocks, but there's just nothing like a nice piece of hardwood to complement a fine rifle. One good thing about this gun is it, it wasn't over oiled. Usually when you see a gun that's over oiled by oiling the, the metal parts and the action, you'll see it come right down through this part of the stock and it, it soaks the oil right into the wood and pretty much uh, can ruin a stock if it's too excessive. It'll actually weaken the wood in that area. Yeah. Sometimes you don't realize the true beauty of the wood in a rifle stock until you refinish it like this because the factory finishes that they put on are you know they kind of cover up a lot of that grain from the factory that's why custom made rifle stocks are so appealing because uh, you know you got a nice piece of walnut or maple or whatever and it's hand rubbed finish like this it really brings the color of that wood out and then we'll go into the cheek piece here and the rear of the stock there's usually where a lot of the color of the wood comes out 
that's naturally occurring right there by the way that's part of the part of the wood itself you see I'm not worried about the checkering right there because this pretty much seals the oil from the wood in that portion of the stock I'm not too worried about real even coverage the first few coats because I'm just trying to fill all the pores to begin with So anyway, look, I mean, if you can see that, I hope the camera is catching all that, that figure in that wood. I mean, that's, that's a really nice, really nice piece of walnut there. So anyway, let me go ahead and finish the first few coats here, and then I'll go back to uh, when I actually wet sand the stock. I mean, you can use... Uh, real fine steel wool too to get any imperfections out and then go over the final coats to bring the color of the wood and uh, to get the finish nice and even. So this will dry and it'll look dull again so we'll put a few more coats on just to fill all the pores but uh, I just wanted to include this step because it's quite dramatic when you first put that first coat of oil on there to bring all that grain out that's in the wood and all the color so let me stop the video here and finish what I'm doing and then I'll be back with you okay well here we are back again and uh, this is about three days after the previous filming and about five coats of true oil on this wood stock um, what I've got here today is a small pan of warm water and some of this 400 grit wet or dry paper this is what I use and I've got it soaking in this warm water okay and then of course we got our birchwood casey true oil that we're going to put on after we get it all sanded down now you're probably wondering why would you want to sand uh, the finish that we've applied well, what we need to do is make sure all the pores are filled and the sanding will bring it down to a nice even slick finish here. <coughs> mm, pardon me. But anyway, what, what we're trying to do is, is get all the pores filled. I don't know if the light can catch that, but all those pores as you can see on the stock still need to be filled so it's going to take some sanding and then reapplying finish and then sanding again and reapplying finish until the stock comes out completely smooth same on this side and I've kept the uh, the checkering covered and it's going to stay covered until we're finished completely finished with the stock okay every now and then you have to reapply it because the tips and the corners here want to peel back but if you can I don't know if the camera is catching that or not but as the light is reflecting off the stock you can see all those tiny little pores all that needs to be evened out and filled and by the way uh, since I'm showing you these close-ups please pardon my hands my line of work is I'm a mechanic by trade and have been for the last 35 or so years so any bumps and bruises that you see on my hand is just due to my work. Um, I use my hands to make a living. Just another working class American that likes to go hunting and fishing on his time off. So anyway, uh, let me go ahead and start doing some sanding here. and uh, We're going to start out with a small piece and fold it together. You always want to, when you, when you fold this paper, make sure you go with the back of the paper against the abrasive side. You never want to go this way with the abrasive side uh, facing each other because it'll wear itself down as you're using it. Okay? But I dip it in this warm water and I just go over it like this. Okay? Nice and even. Don't get in too much of a hurry. 
and you can see that you start to get that whitish cloudy looking stuff what that is that's the finish actually coming off okay now what I also have done in the past is I've uh, warmed up true oil not hot just warmed it up a little bit and used it as my uh, lubrication for sanding instead of water but in this case we're going to use water and what I've done it actually is it, it kind of creates like a slurry when you use the true oil you can also use boiled linseed oil but it takes so long to dry between coats I prefer the true oil um, but it like I said it creates a slurry and you want to leave it on there and let it harden and that fine uh, uh, sawdust that you're getting as you're sanding it down actually aids in filling all the pores then you got to go back and sand it again and get it even but this has worked really well for me in the past so we're gonna sand it all the way smooth and I'll tell you just from what little I've done already I can feel the difference already I mean it's it's really getting down even after a few times of doing this you'll get a surface just like glass on here okay I mean it'll be so slick and so smooth it's really hard to beat a hand rub finish and what's good about this is if you get dings or scratches in the stock you can go right back in sand that down use the true oil layer it on you know a few coats and just blend it back in and it, it's virtually impossible to see well, I mean, it's just blending back in the same material that you finished the stock with to begin with, you know. I think this is going to be a really pretty stock because there's so much nice figure in this wood, especially back here on the cheek piece and on the comb. And I don't know how many other people do it this way, but I like to leave the uh, the recoil pad or the the buttstock, especially if it's a plastic one like this, leave it on the wood because then you you get a perfect mating edge there where the two the plastic and the wood come together, and there's no seam. And uh, if you ever have to remove it, it'll go right back on there perfectly. You don't feel any edges at all, okay? And that helps seal the wood as well. I always just leave them on. I, there's no no reason to take them off, you know. Now, if you're using a rubber recoil pad, I probably wouldn't do that. Uh, I would sand it down to the finest uh, grit that you're going to use using a rubber recoil pad and then remove it and go ahead and finish the stock and then put it back on and then all your lines should match up perfectly you know as long as you kept it on there while you were sanding the stock that way the contour of the wood and the this mating surface is perfectly married okay so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video and go ahead and go over the whole stock and then once I get it done I'll show you we get it dry um, one thing I forgot to mention is before you do you take this step of sanding this you need to make sure that the finish is completely bone dry you don't want any tackiness or stickiness it's got to be bone dry hard to be effective because if it's not truly dried yet and, and cured it's gonna roll up on you and gum up your paper you want a nice uh, dusty kind of uh, residue left over from the sanding you don't want any any uh, any of the finish to roll off and gum up your sandpaper because what that's going to do is, is take it down too far and you'll be right back into the wood again you have to start over so let me get it get it all sanded down and I'll be back with you in a few minutes got the stock pretty well sanded and it leaves kind of a dull finish on there kind of a dull satiny finish make sure everything's dried off because I, I had to wash this in water still a little bit of water on here but 
not going to hurt anything right now. Uh, it really needs to be completely dry though. And I can go ahead and get started by putting on a very thin coat of true oil. And you can see, here's a close up, I'll show you a close up right there. See how that's kind of a dull satiny finish? You can still see there's pores that need to be filled all the way up, but we're get, working our way down to them, you know. And what I do is uh, I just use the tip of my finger and apply it very thin coat so that we don't get any runs all over from one end to the other. Okay, I'm going to start at the fore end and work my way down. Like I say, a real thin coat. You don't want it to pool up anywhere because you're going to be putting layers of it on there anyway. And you'll really start to get an idea of what the finished product's going to look like when you get this fresh oil put on there. It really starts to take on that glassy appearance <clears throat> as you work your way down. See? It might be one or two drops cover a large a large area just like that that was one drop and I covered it from there all the way back it's all you need you don't need to slop it on there because you're gonna get runs and streaks and everything else and just this uh, secondary coat here after the sanding is probably superior to most factory finishes that you get um, when you buy a new gun depending on what that is of course it's hard to find a, a wooden stock gun anymore they all come with black polymer stocks now so you know a walnut stock is kinda hard to come by anymore unless you pay premium price so we want to do a real good job on this piece. You just want to spread it out as thinly as possible. It's really amazing how well this stuff covers. Make sure you get every little square millimeter of the stock. Don't leave any dry patches. I'll put on about three more coats before I go back and sand it again. It's a lot of work, but it sure is worth it in the end. Let me tell you, you, you get a finish rifle stock that your friends and other people will really capture their attention when you walk up to them with it because it's going to be a thing of beauty. See that nice glossy appearance? I put a screwdriver here in the action screw hole to help hold the stock so I don't have to grab it with my other hand. Uh, that is grab the stock where I've applied the finish and ruin it. You know, you don't want to do that. You don't want to get fingerprints on it. That's just going to create more work later on because you're going to have to sand that out. Just like runs or anything else, you got to sand those out. You can't leave those in there. Not if you want something that looks right.
every step you take like this really brings out the grain even more the, the beauty of the wood you get another step closer I've done this so many times I finally just wanted to do a video on it give you folks an idea on how I refinish my stocks and unless it's an old collectible piece you know something that needs to be left in original condition this will add value to your gun like this one here you know it, it had quite a bit of damage on the stock where it had been dinged up and scraped and scratched all that's gone now and we're going to come up with a finish on this stock that was superior to when it was new now if the customer doesn't like the stock to be real glossy you can go back with some quadruple ought steel wool and just lightly go over it and it'll knock a lot of that sheen off of there and give you a more a duller satiny finish you know some people don't want it real glossy either way you're trying to seal up the wood so that moisture can't get into it and warp the stock Because if you take it out and go hunting with it, you're going to get water on it, that's for sure. <clears throat> you might get caught in a rain shower or snow or, you know, droplets of water will come raining down from the forest canopy and get on your wood stock. You want all that to be sealed off perfectly. And it's really quite a, I mean, it's a, it's a chore to do this, but when you get down to the final steps of this and you see the, just how beautiful some of this wood is, it's, a, it's quite a joy, actually. It's a joy to see that beauty come out. Nothing prettier than natural beauty. There's nothing man-made that can equal it. as you can see here okay here we are two days and two coats of the true oil later and you can well see that uh, all of the pores in the wood are completely filled we've got a nice slick finish here um, it's probably going to take another two very light coats but what I do here at the end instead of uh, using a wet sandpaper or wet or dry paper I use some quadruple lot steel wool and I lightly go over the stock and, and knock the sheen off of it and get any tiny imperfections out of the wood or out of the finish you, know, you want to go over it and kind of give it a nice dull cloudy look and then after this is done you want to go back and put a really thin coat of true oil on there and you get a super super nice satiny finish there I mean that's just as smooth as it can be give you a close-up there you can kind of see how I how I got that down smooth you don't want to rub until you go through the layers of true oil um, it's a little bit harder to do with steel wool than it is with the wet and dry because you you can certainly sand right through into the bare wood and you don't want to do that. You just want to take the top glaze off. Just like that. And you know that could be a finished product right there. A finished where you want to stop. Um, you can go back over it with uh, some stock sheen and conditioner or some kind of rubbing compound. But I'm going to put a few more coats of the true oil on there just to give it a nice tough finish. 
when you get done with this uh, steel wool, you got to make sure and thoroughly clean the stock. Okay, and you got to make sure it's dry too, because if it's the least bit tacky or sticky, you're going to make a mess with this steel wool. It's got to be bone dry and hard. It's got to just flake off of there. I'm going to try and get a nice glass-like finish here. It's quite a process, but you know, at the end, it's, it's really worth it. Because you've got to finish on a rifle stock that's not matched by many uh, manufacturers. And if you do get one that's finished that nicely, you're going to pay through the nose for it, let me tell you. But a pretty piece of walnut like this really deserves a good custom finish. I always try to try to go with the grain when you can, but when you get in little places like under the grip cap here, you have to hit it kind of across the grain a little bit, but then go back and smooth it out. Now, if you can see the figure in that wood, it's just really nice, you know. I tried to make this an outdoor channel as much as I can, but occasionally I'll do something like this, get a project, and I'd like to include it uh, with what I've got available for you. Because, you know, when you got a nice piece of equipment like this, um, you, I, I try to relay the message across to show you how I accomplished, you know, the, the finish that I've got. So now I'm going to go ahead and clean this off real good and put on a final coat or two of true oil. As you can see, that's a nice satin finish on there. If I, if I were to go over that with some polishing compound, that would bring more of the gloss out. But like I said, I'm going to put another coat on this wood. Everything is sealed perfectly. There's no, no more uh, grains of, of wood that are, have open pores. None of the grain of the wood has any open pores at all. That's what I meant to say. Everything's completely weatherproof and sealed. Like I say, start with just a little bit on the tip of your finger. It's all you need. And apply it real thin. Kind of have to work a little bit quicker on these last coats because they dry so fast. You can thin this out a little bit using thinner or uh, maybe a little bit of boiled linseed oil because it does dry much slower. But I've had pretty good luck just doing it this way. You just put a little on there and just spread it out nice and even all the way. You don't want it puddling up anywhere. never ceases to amaze me the attention that these gun stocks get when I get done with them. The first word is usually wow, <laughs> you know, when they see that. It's, it's something you don't see every day.
Just kind of blend it all in real nice and even. Don't leave any bare spots because they will show up. I'm not sure what the labor rate is for a job like this, but uh, you know, if you had to consider the amount of time and effort, hours that are involved, I'm sure it would be rather expensive. But you can do this yourself, you know, and get professional results just like that. It's when you get into areas of the wood like this where there's a lot of figure that it really shows up. You can just see the fire in that wood just pop right out. I put this piece of cardboard down so that the stock doesn't pick up any debris. I don't want it getting up in the, into the oil and getting on the stock. This is what's called hand rubbing. I don't use a brush. Just use my hand. That's how you get to finish it. Your hand has just a, the perfect texture to be able to spread this oil out the way it needs to be. Make sure you don't have any runs. Get everything spread out nice and even. I guess that's, that's pretty good lighting there where you can see what I'm doing. If you need to go over a place because you missed a spot, Get a little bit of oil on your tip of your finger and just blend it in. You know, don't be afraid. Once again, spread it out. It'll blend itself right into it. look it over make sure I didn't miss any spots here one more thin coat of that and then uh, I'm gonna go over it with uh, some polish there's a spot that I missed see right there just blend it in you know go over it and blend it in stay with the grain of the wood maybe that's something I didn't mention before but you don't want to go across the grain just stay with it I'm going to hang it up to dry. Okay, I've already started polishing on this gun a little bit, and I've begun to remove the masking from the checkering, and I'll be going over that here in a minute. But uh, here I've got some polishing compound, and the way I just apply it is by using it using my finger and just put it on just like that. 
and just kind of rub it in. Rub that polish right in, into the wood there. And I'll take soft cloth like this. Let me zoom out. And I really get after it here. You really want to feel some heat on this when you're polishing it out. So you have a nice smooth glass like surface. And after it's all polished out, this part of the job's uh, finished. What you want to do now is just uh, chase these lines with a single line checkering cutter. Make sure you stay within the line. Just cleaning it up a little bit. That helps sharpen the diamonds a little bit and it also gets any excess uh, of the finish that leached under the tape, it, it cleans that right out of the checkering pattern. Kind of have to develop a feel for it. And then what I use is a brass brush like this. Don't use a steel one. Use use soft brass and brush it out. You're not going to hurt this finish because it's very tough finish. Of course you don't want to get in there and scour it like you're scouring a, an old iron pot or something. Just brush it out and that gets all the debris out of the checkering pattern. Then what I'll do is come back and hit the opposing lines. And after that, I apply a coat of uh, true oil into the checkering and that gives it a nice even finish. You see the grain actually coming through the checkering just like it's supposed to. So I'm going to go ahead and finish out the panels, all four panels. I'll take this off and get it all finished out and then I'll come back and show you how to apply that true oil to that checkering so that your gun stock is complete. Now we've got the checkering all cleaned up here. It took me a little while, but uh, here's what I do. I take my true oil, get paper towel here, and just dip it in there and then rub it in. kind of want to saturate it a little bit. Make sure you get all the edges. And then just wipe it out. Get all the excess out of there. Make sure you don't leave anything on the stock. No runs or anything like that. Okay? Same thing with the forend. Just rub it in. Looks kind of bad right now, but then once you wipe it out good, get it all cleaned out. Boy, it really comes together then.
So you want this wood sealed as well. There's no point in sealing the stock if you're not going to seal the checkering. You know, any moisture gets in there, you don't want it soaking into the wood. So that's that's sealed. Get the last panel here. And I'll clean it all out. And there we have it. That's how you refinish a stock with checkering. You can preserve the checkering and refinish the stock at the same time. Well folks, that pretty much wraps up this video. I know it was a little bit unusual because I normally uh, present videos of outdoor activities like hunting or fishing or whatever, but uh, I wanted to relay to you that in case you have an old gun sitting around, maybe it was something that was passed on to you by your father or your granddad or somebody, and uh, it has wood in it, we're talking about a wooden stock now, that you can refinish it and get excellent results like I did with this one, even if it has checkering panels. You know, you mask your checkering off, take good care not to damage any of it, and uh, you should be able to get a beautiful finish just like this one. And True Oil is available just about everywhere. I think it's like eight dollars for a little bottle of it. And uh, you can go by, you know, the uh, instructions that they have on the bottle, but this is the way I do it and the way I get my best results. And as I said before, if you don't like the glossy sheen, you can always go over it with uh, really fine steel wool like uh, quadruple aught steel wool and then lightly rub it out with an old t-shirt and you'll get more of a satin finish. But like I say, there's a lot of old guns that are sitting around that you know have beautiful wood in them just like this one that deserve nothing less than to be refinished and to be used again and enjoyed. So I hope you got something out of the video. I hope you were able to learn something. And uh, remember, if you can get outdoors and go hunting or fishing, hiking, camping, whatever it is you like to do, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And until next time, hit the like button, hit the bell icon, and subscribe. That way you'll know when more videos like this will be coming your way. So, like I said, until next time, y'all take care. Y'all have a good one.